Okay, so you know why you're here, right? Stranger Things, Season 5. Exactly. It feels like we've been waiting forever. 2025 can't come soon enough. But we've got some juicy stuff to tide us over until then. Oh, yeah. News, interviews, even some wild fan theories. Wild. We're talking Linda Hamilton joining the cast. Whoa. No way. Yes, way. To break it all down, we have our Stranger Things expert. Hey, glad to be back. It's going to be a wild ride, that's for sure. So let's start with the release date. We know it's 2025. But what's the latest? Well, that Writers Guild strike last year really messed things up. It definitely delayed things. The Duffers were very vocal about their support for the strike, too. Yeah, emphasizing how important writers are. Absolutely. They even tweeted that writing does not stop when filming begins. Makes you appreciate the whole process. But things are back on track, right? Oh, yeah, that cast photo from January was a huge relief. It was. Confirmation the production was actually happening. Then Ross Duffer's halfway there post in July got everyone buzzing again. Like those little breadcrumbs keeping us going. Exactly. Speaking of breadcrumbs, Maya Hawk let slip that these eight episodes are basically eight movies. Movie-like. What does that even mean? Right. For a show like Stranger Things. I think we're talking expanded storylines, longer episodes, even more crazy visual effects. Okay. I'm officially hyped now. What about the cast? Are our favorites coming back? Oh, you know it. Eleven, Mike, Joyce, Hopper. They're all there. What about Max? After that season four cliffhanger, I was worried. Breathe easy. Seeing her in that cast photo was all the confirmation we needed. Seriously, I don't know what I would have done if they wrote her off. But what about this new face? Linda Hamilton. Brilliant casting choice, but her role is a complete mystery. Everyone's speculating. Oh, yeah. And you know what else has me speculating? Will Byers' storyline. Sounds like season five is going to be huge for him. Huge is an understatement. Noah Schnapp, who plays Will, has been hinting that Will is really coming into his own now. Not just as, you know, a young man, but like exploring who he is. Exactly, including his sexuality. It's a powerful storyline to follow, especially after all those hints in season four. And it's not just a personal journey either. Ross Duffer said that Will's arc is the glue holding the entire series together. Wow. If that doesn't scream major storyline, I don't know what does. It definitely sounds like Will's experiences, his struggles, will be tied to the fate of Hawkins and the Upside Down. Okay, before we go too deep in that, we got to talk about Millie Bobby Brown and those senior year oh, comments. God. Oh, boy. Is she leaving the show? Is Eleven on her way out? Well, she's been pretty open about wanting to move on, try new things. Can you blame her? She's practically grown up on the show. It's natural that she feels ready to graduate from Hawkins, so to speak. But let's be real. Fans are going to miss her. A Stranger Things world without Eleven. I don't even want to think about it. Me neither. So, the plot. We know there's a time jump. A whole year after season four. What does that mean for everyone? I mean, a year is a long time to process trauma. To try and find some kind of normal after everything they've been through. Especially after Vecna. The Gorgons, the Mind Flare, and now Vecna. This time jump gives them a chance to grow, change, maybe find some peace. But knowing Stranger Things, yeah. that peace isn't going to last. No way. And speaking of things that don't last, the Duffers have made it clear the Upside Down is the main focus now. They even said understanding it is the basis of season five. It's not just fighting monsters anymore. It's about figuring out the truth about this other dimension. What is its connection to Hawkins? Why Hawkins? I think we're finally going to get some answers. Oh, chills. And they already know how it all ends, right? They've said the ending feels right and inevitable. <laughs> they even made the Netflix execs cry when they heard the first script. Seriously. I'm not saying I want to sob uncontrollably, but... A little emotional devastation is expected, right? Maybe. Even David Harbour described the ending as very, very moving. Sounds like we're in for an emotional roller coaster. Tears, cheers, maybe even some fears. I can't wait. And Finn Wolfhard said, season five will be a return to the show's roots. What do you make of that? Makes me think about those early seasons, you know? The sense of wonder, the focus on the core group of friends. The D&D vibes. Yeah, it feels like everything is coming full circle. Speaking of full circle, what about those episode titles? We've got The Vanishing Of, Escape from Kamazots, The Right Side Up. Oh, they're definitely meant to be cryptic. I'm already lost. The Vanishing Of makes you wonder who or what disappears. <laughs> and Escape from Kamazots, that's a straight up reference to the D&D module, The Lost City of Kamazots. <laughs> you know, the Dark Temple. The demon bat god. Wait, hold on. My brain needs to catch up. 
Before we get too deep into theories, let's do a quick season four recap just so we're all on the same page. What were the big takeaways? Season four was all about Vecna's grand entrance. And this wasn't just another monster from the Upside Down. He had a personal connection to Eleven. Oh yeah, he was Henry Creel, one, from Dr. Brenner's lab. He was human once, which makes him even scarier. It wasn't just about his power, it was his mind. The way he messed with your head, twisted your fears against you. He weaponized trauma, targeted teens with troubled pasts, and almost got Max. Oh man, that was intense. It took Kate Bush and running up that hill to bring her back. But even though she's alive, she's still in a coma. Vecna's attack left its mark. Fingers crossed for her recovery. On a lighter note, we got Hopper back. Joyce and Murray breaking him out of a Russian prison, that Demogorgon beheading. Talk about a power move. Meanwhile, the California crew, Mike, Will, Jonathan, Argyle, they finally made it back to Hawkins. Just in time for everything to go to hell. That gate opening at the end. The black smoke pouring into Hawkins. It was chilling. Vecna actually merged the upside down with the real world. And Eleven, even with her powers back, now faces her biggest challenge yet. Can she stop Vecna and save Hawkins? Or is the town doomed? That is the question. And I think we need to unpack it. But let's talk about Eddie Munson's fate, that audio leak about Steve. All that when we come back. So are we really saying there's a chance Eddie might still be alive? After that, well... I know, right? <laughs> the Duffers confirmed it. He's gone. Yeah. But the internet is buzzing. Some of those theories are hard to ignore. Like, Eddie is a vampire. Sounds crazy, I know. Right. But fans are connecting those demo bat bites in the Upside Down. Oh, with the D&D vampire case. Exactly. What if the bites didn't kill him, they turned him? It's kind of cool, actually. Dark, unexpected. It fits right in with all the D&D stuff in the show. Definitely. And Joseph Quinn, he hasn't exactly shut down the rumors. Yeah, he's even hinted at a reunion with the cast. Flashbacks. Something more. Who knows? It's going to be interesting, that's for sure. What if Eddie comes back as something even worse, though? Not a vampire, but like... Like a twisted upside-down version? Yeah. Recognizable, but warped. Now that's a twist I wouldn't see coming. Speaking of twists, what about Steve? That onset audio leak, all that screaming? And Maya Hawk saying, characters are probably going to die. It doesn't look good for him, does it? He's become such a fan favorite, the protector, the babysitter. The unlikely hero. If he dies, it's going to be a huge loss for the group. Devastating. But what if his death is what finally unites everyone against Vecna? Hmm, interesting. Like a rallying point, a it, reminder of what they're fighting for. It would definitely make things even more emotional. All right, enough doom and gloom. The Duffers have been dropping some pretty cryptic clues about season five. Like what? They mentioned time playing a significant role. What could that even mean? Time has always been a big part of the show, hmm. especially with the upside down in the past. But what if they're pushing it further this time? Time travel. <laughs> Alternate timeline. To be? They also talked about a deeper connection between Hawkins and the Upside Down. It's like they're intertwined somehow. More than just a portal. What if Hawkins isn't just a gateway, but the source of the Upside Down's power? The town's history. It's traumas mm. fueling the Upside Down. What if? And that would make Eleven's connection to Hawkins even more important. Not just her hometown, but the key to understanding everything. Exactly. She's the bridge between the two worlds. But what about other theories? You seen anything interesting? Oh, tons. One theory is that Eleven might have to sacrifice herself to defeat Vecna. Her powers. Her life. It's a possibility. She's always put everyone else first. But what if there's another way? A way to sever the connection between Hawkins and the Upside Down. Without a huge sacrifice. Yeah. I like that idea. Still challenging, still emotional, but more hopeful. Honestly, though, I'm more fascinated by the theories about the Upside Down itself. Oh, yeah. Like what? Some people think it's not just another dimension, but like a reflection of our world's darkness, our fears, our worst impulses. That's pretty deep. It adds a whole other layer to the story. What if defeating Vecna isn't about destroying him, but about confronting that darkness within ourselves? Whoa. Healing the wounds that created the Upside Down in the first place. That ties into all those themes of friendship and courage. Facing your fears. But if the Upside Down is a reflection of our darkness, mm -hmm. what does that mean for the real world? That's a good question. Do the events in Hawkins have consequences beyond the town itself? I don't know. This is getting kind of scary now. It makes you think, right? Can you even defeat the Upside Down without addressing that darkness within? Okay, whoa. Hold on a second. Big picture time. Yeah. Eleven's facing her toughest battle yet. The fate of Hawkins is at stake. 
We have a million unanswered questions about the Upside Down, but it all comes back to this. Can Eleven's powers actually defeat Vecna? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? I mean, she's got these incredible powers, but Vecna's basically part of the Upside Down. Right, it's like he's woven into it. So is it even possible? Well, think back to those early seasons. Eleven was just a kid figuring things out. She could barely lift a teddy bear. Exactly, but she closed the gate, she faced the Demogorgon, the Mind Flare. She's come a long way. But Vecna's different, right? It's not just about power, it's his mind. He gets inside your head. He uses your fears against what, you. And he's had all this time to, like, shape the upside down to his will. It's his home turf. So how do you even fight that? Well, remember we were talking about that connection between Hawkins and the upside down? It's like a mirror, right? Reflecting back. all the darkness. So Vecna's not just some external threat. He's part of that darkness. In a way, yeah. That's pretty creepy. But that's where Levin comes in. She's not just powerful, she's connected to Hawkins like no one else. Because of her childhood? Her trauma, her love for her friends, it's all tied to that place. So maybe it's not just about overpowering Vecna, but about understanding him, understanding that connection. It's possible. Remember how Eleven's always used her emotions, her memories, to boost her powers? What if this time it's about something even deeper, healing those wounds? A front in the shadows. So could she actually heal the Upside Down? It's an interesting idea. What if that's the key? Not destroying the darkness, but transforming it. Finding the light within it. Exactly. That's kind of hopeful. I like that. But what happens to Eleven in the process? Can she even come back from that? I don't think anyone comes out of the Upside Down unchanged. It leaves its mark. But she's strong, you yeah, know. Yeah. She's compassionate. And those things might be what helps her not just survive, but grow from this experience. Damn, the duffers are going to put us through it, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. But that's what we love about Stranger Things. It's more than just monsters and stuff, you know. It's about connection, facing your fears, finding that strength inside yourself. And knowing that even when things are dark, there's always that little bit of hope. Exactly. I'm ready for season five. Bring it on. I need answers. I need to know what happens to everyone. Well, the wait's almost over. And until then, keep those theories coming. Who knows what we'll discover before the final chapter. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into Stranger Things Season 5. Remember, friends don't lie. And in Hawkins, anything is possible.